Welcome to the Man Podcast, where your mind truly matters. We're your hosts, Tatenda and Rudy. Here, we tackle life's challenges, foster resilience, and promote wellness. Each episode promises to make a difference, one viewer at a time. Buckle up for a journey of enlightenment, because in the world of man, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Stay tuned. Hello there and welcome to another one. I trust I find you in good spirits. It's a back with another one. My name is Tatenda. Back with another one. Rudy is not here. I've got another white man next to me and you're going to see him in just a sec. Anyway, a word from our sponsors. If you're looking to travel, let them be in charge of your next destination. Firefly Corporate is there to ensure that your next destination is going to be smooth, sharp and sweet. Give them your passport, give them your destination, they'll do it all. They also have got so many packages, as you can see, as you go on to their website, www.fireflycorporate.co.za. Or better yet, if you don't want to go onto Google to search that, just go on and email them at info at fireflycorporate.co.za. Someone somewhere there is going to be so happy to hear about you. It's going to be so happy that you are there and as you go to the next destination we're going to get some sort of a kick kickback from uh firefly corporate so thank you thank you so much for the sponsorship anyway without further ado ladies and gentlemen let me give you a background story before this white person um speaks <laughs> everyone always thinks geez when i say mention those things like i might be racial or what but no i'm just that kind of a guy i'm a clown and rudy is not here so i'm allowed to be even more of a clown than i'm used to anyway so my wife and i walk into northgate mall and uh we park our car next to this lovely furniture store and right in the right on display there's two couches Beautiful couches. Unfortunately, I can't link them up because I did not take a photo of them. How weird is that? Because every other time I take a video or a photo of everything, that means a lot to me. So these lovely couches are the one is turquoise. I think the other one is maroon. And I'm thinking, geez, this would be great for spill the beans. Because you know when you are a podcaster, you're always thinking of things ahead. Then I'm like, babe, let me, let's just go in. And my wife was like, dude, we don't even have money. And I'm like, come on, let's get in. So we get in and there's two, there's two gents that are a little bit of a distance, but in the same shop. How's it, gents? That's me, you know me, I'm a talkative guy. How's it, gents? Hi, guys, how you doing? I'm like, oh, jeez, this guy is nice. Anyway, we just came in, we don't have money, bro, like, no money. But we just saw these couches and we love them. And he's like, oh, nice. So we're looking at them. Then she walks to the other store, to the other uh, side of the couches where there were beds and whatnot. And there's another one and she's like, Babes, this will be good for you when you are editing. You know how it is when you've got wives that are always taking care of you, left, right, and center. I'm talking a lot, I know. Anyway, <laughs> so he then says, oh, you're an editor. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just a podcaster and I edit my own stuff. So all these good videos and thumbnails that you see on this channel, it's yours truly. I'm, I'm humble, I'm just not, I don't break, you know. Anyway, so the guy says, oh, okay, let me just search it out. So he searches us and he sees us like, oh, this one, nice. Um, then from there, the conversation spikes. That's how great a guy this man is. You know, when you meet someone and you, you just know that your spirits are interlinked somewhere, somehow. Then he says to me, um, I do vlogs. And I'm like, oh, nice. You're on YouTube. He's like, no, I don't. I don't post. I'm like, dude, don't be weird. Come on. <laughs> Why? Like, really? Anyway, um, then I'm like, then he says, no, I've got a story and um, I used to be like this. Then I used to uh, document everything that I was with um, his body weight and everything. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, geez, I wish you know, when, I, when I grow old, I want to be like him, ribbed and all that. But yeah, story of another day. That's how me and Jitai met. What a lovely story. My wife always used to say I'm a bad storyteller. What do you think? Is it bad? No, not that bad. I can't even lie about that. It's pretty good. Good storyteller. Tell the story from A to Z. Full on. So my wife, do it right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jita, thank you so much for joining us on the Man Podcast. Thank you for having the, me. The reason why we've got, um, we say the Man Podcast, and when you asked what the name of the channel was, I said it's Podcast with Tatenda. But in Podcast with Tatenda, we've got so many shows, segments that I are going on. I did see that. So Please subscribe, the, subscribe. Like and subscribe. I like this guy. He's the first guest that comes in and tells you to like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. 
Um, the main podcast is it's it's an abbreviation for matured available nature, and I believe that when we say the main podcast, a lot of people will go and say, "Oh no, it's about gents." No. It's about every gender that is available to nurture the next person. So there is a lot of mental health. And the reason why we started the channel was at a time where men were committing suicide because of mental health issues. And gents did not want to come up and say, I'm not okay. So like, we're going to create a platform that is going to give men a voice. So that's when we're seeing gents that are coming through. I had depression. I had mental disorder. I wanted to kill myself. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug abuser. This, this. So this is the main podcast. So welcome. It's not an interview. Bro. Yeah. So don't ever expect me to say, who is Jitai? <laughs> but guess what? I'm going to ask that question. Right. Anyway, it's a conversation. And the first question that everyone will ask, even with the team, when I say I've got this gent coming through, they're like, who is that? And I always hate that question. Why? Because it comes across as, even when I sent it to you and you said, and I said, please tell me a little bit about yourself. And I said, I feel like I'm on a dating app. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so who is Gitai? So my name is Gitai. Uh, oh, Gitai. Yes. Gitai, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, my bad, yeah. Don't worry. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Um, so essentially, I'm a part-time DJ, work at the furniture stop, uh, run it, do everything, sell couches, do music, work on myself, workouts, eating healthy, you know, just day-to-day, living yeah. my life, trying yeah. to, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate you for coming in and not judging the book by its cover. Because a lot of people come into the shop and be like, yeah, this place is very expensive, you know. That's but what my wife says. So let's, yeah. let's put it on the line. <laughs> I was like, babe, let's get in. And like, Yo, <laughs> babe, we don't even have money and this looks expensive. But yeah. the stuff in that shop is beautiful. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, so, yeah. Wow. We literally, work out, gym, eat, sleep mental health as you say yeah, you know yeah. this is what we're here for you yeah. know it's a platform where we can talk what we have to say talk from our hearts not be scared not be shy awesome stuff yeah. and you're a man of fashion as well because i can see the chains going and now the chain is for actually my country so it says bring them home okay. okay um yeah so it's actually something that's hitting me pretty bad right now wow it's the wow. war between israel and gaza which yeah. i'm not going to go into because yeah. we're not here yeah. for that yeah. yeah but that just you know to keep me in it. Keep you grounded. Yeah. Yes. As well. I'm from Zimbabwe myself and no matter what, home is always home. You know, the funny yeah. thing about that is my other friend, Ian. Yeah. He's from Zim. Wow. And then when you walked into the shop, yeah. I called him straight away. I was like, hey man, I just met this guy. His name's Tate ah. Nemoyo. Does that, that ring a bell <laughs> anyway? And he's like, that sounds Zim. And I was like, are you sure? He's like, for sure. Wow. <laughs> For sure. Wow. And I was like, wow. So shout out to Ian, who's working currently in the Lagadish shop in Greenstone. Kill it, man. <laughs> kill it, bro. Kill it. And as you're killing it, subscribe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Amazing, man. Gita, um, you said when I asked you who you are, a brief uh, background, and your, your exact words were, uh, furthermore, you fell in love with the fashion, with, uh, with the with the furniture industry. And as I walk into your store, it says a lot about you. I don't know, it's just a coincidence or what, but literally what you are is what your shop is. Yeah. Why is that? Um, listen, we work every day. We work from eight till six, yeah. you know? Yeah. So for us, it's all about the shop. That's our home. We spend more time there than anywhere else. Sure. We clean it, we make sure it's run properly, paint it, add stuff always. And I think why you found it that it's like me, it's because I do most of it. I fix the displays, I do everything in the shop. You know, we we work hard, you know, so do you. So yeah, do you. yeah, Different yeah, industries, yeah. but we're still but doing still the same thing hard, to survive, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so basically from day one, when the company started, I was in it. All right. Um, not as a high position I am now. Started at the bottom. Yeah. And you know you started from the bottom. Now, now we're here. Yeah. 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 
So, so yeah, so I, we fixed the display together. We lift couches ourselves. We don't carry them with trolleys, with trolleys and, and all, all that, that, you yeah, know. Yeah, we use our right. hands. Yeah. So yeah. we put our blood, sweat, and tears in there. And then, you see, good yeah. things happen out of yeah. it. So I'm yeah. r- truly grateful to be here. Wow. Please, 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 please subscribe and like and let's grow this channel. Wow. Let's be millionaires here, you know. Awesome. I, I cannot wait to sit on those particular couches and record. So you never know, over the next few weeks, you're going to see that kind of setup in here they say you need to speak it into existence you see? so you're going to see or even have us and seeing all the background of the beautiful furniture that this guy is selling and i know for sure that when you walk into a store and someone greets you with so much not because i look like i have money because i don't look like one <laughs> you could have easily said no 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 you're not our ideal customers get out of here but guess what you were so welcoming and Credit ways, Jew. Thank you for that. Oh, it's... Um, you, you mentioned your, your music industry. And before we get into your music industry, one would think the furniture industry goes with fashion. You are a man of fashion as it is. One would think music, fashion, they sort of go hand in hand. Where does the furniture fit in? The furniture is the main thing currently. You yeah. know? Like we do that daily, all day. You understand? Uh, DJ came along in my life when I was going through a transformation. And that's when music hit me hard because I was just listening to music all the time, you know, yeah, trying to yeah. get that motivation in, trying to get, you know, the time in, all of that. So that's where music actually came in. Uh, and then I decided to take it further. So not just learn music, but actually DJ music, which is a skill by itself. You understand? So, yes, we can sell couches and that could be a skill. Yeah. But with that, you know, you also have to have some other skills Obviously. and hobbies. Yeah. And music has always been in your life, you know. Yeah. You can go sit on the bathroom or in the toilet and you'll be like, yeah, let me just put a song on. A song on <laughs> you know, it, even yes, when you go into yeah. the shower, I promise yeah. you sing in the shower. Exactly. You sing in the I, shower. I, I, Everyone I sings am, in the shower. You know, when they speak about wood and mic, I'm the best singer in the shower. Like my voice, my notes, everything. <laughs> is just, my son as well. Like literally, it's a fight to get him into the shower. It's a fight to get him out, out of the shower. shower. Yes. I, I, get, I get where you're coming from with the music part. Um, because it sort yeah. of soothes you, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's also mentally, it's clearing. You know, you go into like this bubble where you just don't think about anything. Just let loose and you just do your music and you DJ and it's, it's wonderful. It really yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. And I'm truly grateful to my parents who helped me out with that. Got me a DJ board and, and etc. But, um, you know. Wow. We're going to come back to your, to your DJing stuff. And I'm so fascinated about that because... I always saw myself as more emceeing and speaking events and all of that. The DJing part, I always felt like one of the kids that I used to teach, he was getting into DJing school. So he'll be like, sir, come, let me show you. I'm like, he's pressing this, pressing there. I'm clueless right now. But we're going to come back to that. You mentioned the part that you were going through a transformation. Can you tell me a little bit more about that part of transformation? What does that mean? So basically the whole transformation thing came when i was extremely fat okay let me put it like that jeez this guy is not filtering anything. yeah i'm i'm gonna be straight out honest you know mm. i don't want to butter the picture yeah so i was actually very fat and i, I was struggling to breathe because i had asthma at the time um i was around 97 98 kilos wow oh. and uh, i took it upon myself that i want to change something wasn't feeling right you know I was wearing my clothes and I was like, not looking good. Let me get, go, go buy bigger clothes so I can fit in, yeah. you know, go into style, as you always say, yeah. fashion and style. So yeah. kept on getting bigger sizes to a point where I got to like XXL. Jeez. And I was like, I don't think I want to buy XXL anymore. Because, you know, the fatter you are, the more the prices obviously. are, you know. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's a limited number of people that exactly. have that. So obviously demand is on here. Yeah. So I took that upon myself and... Thanks again to Ian, got me into the whole fitness. Thanks, Ian. You yeah, are Ian's agent, the man. Right? You know? the man. <laughs> Why yeah. am I sitting here? Where's Ian? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, so Ian was like, you know what? Because Ian has always been to fitness. He was a personal trainer before he started working in the company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So he told me, you know what? Come to the gym, and I've always been scared to go to the gym. Because obviously there's so much confidence lacking because you're thinking, you know, people everyone is looking at me and going, gosh, yeah. What is this guy doing here? What are you doing here? You check them with like their sleeveless vest. But then at the same time, you go to gym to get fixed. So why do we then ask someone that is coming to gym and they're not in the right shape? They're coming to fix that, yeah. That's, that's now you can say it like that. But when you're in that state, you don't think of it like that. Jeez. 
you'll go in and you'll be like, you know what, these guys are going to judge me right now. That's that's the thought that I had into going to gym. Yeah. I'm going to go there, people are going to be like me, and like I'm going to go like that, and they'll be like, no, that form is not correct, and they'll judge you for it. Wow. So I didn't go to gym. I trained at home. I had a garage with two weights and a bench, mm. okay? And I just trained there every single day. I did one exercise for six months. Jeez. Literally one with, exercise. And where was Ian in this spot? In this, at this Ian point? was doing it with me in oh, the garage. Oh, okay. So okay. imagine. We so he understood that you were not confident enough to go to gym. Yes. Okay. And he didn't push me to go to gym because he knew wow. that I wouldn't carry on. Wow. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, very simple. Matt Fraser is called, that's the, the name of the exercise. You lift up, go up, down, squat, that's it. Full body, you get it one time. That's the only exercise I started with. Okay. Okay. And then I started seeing results after like one month, two months, three months. But you know, you're not going to go from extremely big to slim six pack. It's a journey. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a journey. And if you're not patient, there's, you it know, nothing, don't yeah. start it. Think like life as well. If you're not patient with it, then yeah. Exactly. So I had to wait for that right moment to start. And I did it. So I can confidently say that I lost like 35 kilos at Jeez. my peak. Wow. So... I, it's pretty wow. good. It's pretty hard. I, I want to come back to that point where you said you did one exercise for six months. Yeah. Mentally, where were you? Because it, it starts with, yes, that one exercise, tomorrow you're a little bit stiff. After two days, you're more stiff. There is always going to be that time where you look yourself in the mirror and you're thinking, my body is in pain, but I'm not seeing the change. What is that doing to you mentally? Because there is someone that is out there and they're thinking, Yes, I want to do what you said. Yes, I want to be patient. Yes, I want to be consistent. But I'm not seeing the results. So results comes with dedication and consistency. Wow. Consistency. And he's got a tattoo of that. Yeah. So consistency is literally everything in life. They, they, the coaches say practice makes perfect. You know, they, And they don't lie to you. They just want you to keep on doing it. Yeah. Um, mentally, I was in the music even. I wasn't even in the workout. So I would work out, but I would listen to the music. So every time I'd put on a better song that I like to keep me going. Going, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. And obviously, it's much easier to do it two people than one person. Because mm. I can't force myself to go to gym That's the thing. and do it. And it's not every day that you're going to be motivated. Exactly. So yeah. having two people is like you motivate each other. So he'll do 10 reps. I'll be like, no, give me one more. Make it 11 reps. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's where Ian was coming into play. That's where Ian. So I'll be at five and I have to do 10 and you'll be like, Come you on. owe me five. Yeah, you, know? you have to be like, yes, I'm tired. I and then if I put thing. it down, you add two. Jeez. So then it will go to seven. But then at 97 kilograms, you are sweating like madness. Sweating, you are, sweating. You feel sweating. like falling down, literally. literally. Literally falling down. Like I'll finish a set, I'll lie down on the floor for like five minutes. Because I had asthma, so I have to pump. Pump. So For six months. Six months, one exercise. <laughs> wow. That's... You know, I'm, I'm trying to fathom what you're going through. Because you look at... Um, there's a TV show that used to be on TV. TV show on TV, yeah. There, there was a show that used to be on TV about um, uh, people that are overweight. And, yeah, is it? Okay. People that are overweight and say shit, I think it was TLC or something like that. My, yeah, my 600 pound life. And if you look at that, you're thinking the person loves food, not because they just love food. There is a story behind someone that is eating. When you gained weight, because someone would say, I lost my mom, I lost my parent, or I lost my loved one, or I lost something that was valuable to me, so that was part of grief. So I started off with one packet of chippies, then it ended up being another and another and another. Before you know it, like you're saying, it started off with, okay, medium is not fitting, so let me go for a large. Yeah. Large becomes, I think it's too tight now, let me go for extra large. extra large. Before you know it, I don't think there's anyone that goes from a small to an XXXL and they are looking at themselves like, wow, okay, wow. Mm. Before you know it, when you look back at the mirror, like, when did this happen? You exactly. Understand? Was that the same thing that you went through? trying to cover some sort of void in your life or you're trying to cover up some some sort of pain or sadness 
what made you gain that weight? Was it was it something? Because clearly, can we then say it's hereditary? Because part of your family or your bloodline, or whatever, they were overweight, or it was just you and your decisions with your eating that brought you to that point. And if that's the case, was it because of mental health that made you feel? No, let me just stuff it up. So yes and no. Okay, so food number one is addictive, right? Mm. You get addicted to eating food. Mm. It's it's a fact. You literally get addicted. That's why people can't stop eating. Mm. So you'll have one burger and then you have another burger because one doesn't fill you. Mm. But it's all in your mind that one doesn't. There's no fill such you. thing as it doesn't fill you. It fill you. Yeah. Do you understand? Like you're eating a full one burger. So mentally, you have to be in it. And I wasn't in it. Like my mental health was not. You know. Um, very personal, I suffered through a breakup, actually. And then after that, it was like, you know, I got to get my shit together now. How, um, how big were you when you got into, when the breakup happened? I was just under my peak. And then after it happened, I went away. I went to Cape Town and then I was eating in Cape Town. Yeah. Because I was just trying to get over it. Get over it, yeah. yeah. But I wasn't doing it in the right way. I wasn't burning it off. I was adding Just on to what I had. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So now if I had to look back, I'll be like, I mean, it definitely different headspace, different mentality, yeah. different yeah. everything. So, so, the, so the breakup made you gain weight? Yeah, essentially. Essentially. That's insane. Someone once posted, and uh, his name is Puluko. He was once here. Uh, he's an author as well. And he said, uh, he was talking to ladies. Because ladies have got this thing of when you break up with your guy, you then go and sort yourself out and you get a degree or go buy yourself a car or something. Then uh, he says you deserve being broken hearted. Because each time you were broken hearted, you went and did something for you. <laughs> What's up fam? It's your boy Alake. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thank you so much. So, bro, uh, it's amazing. This guy loves music. Eh? We are at a five minute break and this guy is all of ch <laughs> anyway, uh, we're speaking about diet. Now, I understand that there is points where one is going to feel demotivated. Probably because someone screwed you over, someone cut you off in traffic or a taxi driver in this instance. <laughs> we're in South Africa, so taxi drivers are on their mark every day. Um, something happens, or someone in the office breaks your coffee cup, whatever. Um, then you're demotivated. You end up, I've got a friend of mine that says, Tats, each time we're about to exercise with my husband, something happens with my school because she's got a school. Maybe one of the kids' parents gave her nonsense and whatnot. Then she has a slab of chocolate too. That's a calming, hmm. whatever, Method. women. Yes, yeah. So <laughs> did you ever have that kind of thing where you're demotivated? Now you have to go back to your cheat meal. Because with gym, you're going to have a cheat day. And with the cheat day, obviously, the repercussions are going to be the next day. And you have to be willing to work through those... Uh, those cheat meals whatever the case may be did you ever have those as you were starting the journey to lose so of course you're gonna have it you know you can't just go it's like eating junk okay i'm gonna say junk yeah because it was junk junk yes yeah you can't go from zero to a hundred you know mm. you have to try and cut down all right so i would i didn't struggle that much with that because it's temptation and if you don't let that temptation get to you, you won't you struggle won't, yeah. to understand. So my mom loves cooking, okay? She's Moroccan, wow. all right? She's Moroccan, full-on Moroccan. Wow. Spicy food is her thing, you know? Fish, pasta. And mom's food is the best. Mom, you know, you know yeah. no, nothing can replace that. <laughs> exactly. So yes, temptation was hard, but you have to work with it, you know? If you want to achieve your goal, if you want to achieve something, you have to put your mind to it. You know, you can't wake up one day and be like, I'm going to lose 30 kilos. You wake up the next day. Oh, do I have to? <laughs> I need to get out of bed. It's five o'clock, you know? You're like, do I have to lose 30? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not saying if you see, let's say, a burger or if your mom or if your parents or whoever, your brother, your siblings, any, anyone orders McDonald's and they offer you. I'm not going to say no. All right. Don't go from zero to 100. OK. Say yes. Don't order me three burgers as I used okay, to eat. Okay, I have one. No. Order me one burger, no chips. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say that has 
played a big role in my my transformation because I was pretty good with that. Yeah. Um, I would say my mom helped me a lot. Like, mom, fish today, wow. broccoli tomorrow, wow. salad the so, next so, day. So your family actually took up the challenge with you. Not having, you know, you know, it hurts where you're saying, guys, I'm trying to lose weight and everyone is eating fried mm. fries, chips, mm. you mm. name it, in front of you, then that becomes something else. So yeah. credit ways, you, your family. I think this losing of weight has to be a collective thing. Yeah. You can't do it on your own. So Ian was there, your friends and family were there. Yeah. Your mom was there as well to make sure that in as much as I want to cook that greasy meal, <laughs> I can't because yeah. my boy is trying so to. As much I want away. that dunked burger from yeah, KFC nah. or, you know, like just stuff like that, that yeah. you, you, you could bar all the time and you had the option to. Because, you know, when you work in the mall, it's easy. Yeah, it's, it's, just it's easy. Around you know, the corner. And, around yeah, the corner, okay. you just walk in and yeah. you bar your, yeah. your junk food and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, thanks to Kawhi, actually, who helped me out quite a bit. Um, I used to buy a shit ton of food from Kauai. Yeah. You yeah. know, because Kauai is like healthy eatery. Mm, That's exactly. what they say they are. I don't know what in, <laughs> what is inside at the end of the day. But, but they say so. Yeah. But they say so. Word, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. beetroot, cauliflower and mushrooms as your patties. Not that, yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds terrible. But when but you actually it's eat it, healthy. Yeah, it's I would nice rather have well. that. I'll so. try that out. Thank you, Kauai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, now thank you about for telling us your journey. I know it's stuff that one is not comfortable with. You thinking, because yeah. I saw even from the look of your eyes, that's how much it hurt you. Because yeah, that's, sure. that's, a, that's a close subject. So for you to open that to my listeners and to my viewers and to the people around you, that's what you were going through. That's big of you. I appreciate you. You are, you, for the you, are, you are actually advocating for, <laughs> I used to be like this, now look at me. Yeah. So it is possible. It can be done. And no, I don't have a six pack or a four pack. Okay. And you don't, don't think this. I have that or like I don't. <laughs> it, it doesn't have it yet. So <laughs> that. Um, let's come back to you said you would play your favorite music track to push you to the next. I want to speak about your DJing and when, yes, fine, you started off by listening to the music. But as you're listening to music, the one thing that happened with me was I spent a little bit of time with producers. And the moment they started telling me what gets into a song. Now I'm starting to separate, oh, there's the drum, there was the percussion, there was this. But then from a normal song, you're just like, wow, that song yeah. is amazing. I love the song. But then I started to appreciate music differently. Just from here, okay, now you split the vocals to the instrument, to that, to that, to that. Is that the same kind of thing that happened to you before you decided, you know what? I think DJing is my thing. I love music, but I want to take it a little bit further from just listening to maybe playing it or making it or writing it, whatever the case may be. So the first thing with music, it's, it's a very tricky topic. I'll tell you why. Because when you listen to music, you listen to the final product, you know? Yeah. You don't actually know the work that goes into it, okay? And you don't actually know all the elements that go into it. And you're just hearing Travis, 21, whoever it may be as a final yeah, thing. Yeah, singing, yeah. Yeah, I understand. So... I was also like that. I used to listen to a song and I'd be like, that's very cool. Like, I would, nice like I would love to know how to make those beats. Wow. You understand? Yeah. And then I took it upon myself to actually study and learn it. So I went to the DJ course, the, the advanced DJ course. Uh, and I think with that knowledge, I could say that it's extremely difficult to make a song. So you, <laughs> you cannot wake up one morning and be like, I'm going to release a track. Wow. Okay? Like, that's not possible. Wow. All right. Okay. Um, when I actually used to think that, you know, these guys release daily well, or is, weekly this or... This is easy money. <laughs> <laughs> easy money, you know? Um, but it's actually not. It's very difficult. So the music changed everything for me. Okay? Because I would listen to a song and I would get inspiration by the words okay i can speak two languages okay and not local languages yes, okay like not afrikaans Zulu, right? yeah. i can speak hebrew okay. all right so songs in hebrew are tend to be a lot more personal to me because i can understand it in a different way different you understand it's like if i have to listen to my piano right now you'll be like crazy buzzy you know because you, you relate to the to the exactly. yeah, yeah yeah and also it's in your language so you yes. can yeah, you, you, you feel what it's like. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I came up with the name G Patron a while back. 
uh, when Ian and I were just chilling in the shop. Actually, <laughs> yes, Ian from from exercise to listen. Uh, I Ian have to give him credit because yeah. it has not been an easy six years that I know Ian. Well, and they're okay. stuck. He's been like, there. I used to be his wife, if oh. you want to say that like that. <laughs> like, imagine, like, wake up in the morning, go to gym, go to work. After you finish at work, yeah. you go to gym again. But Ian is with you the whole time because we're working together, we're working gym together. together. Yes, so yeah. it's, it's literally so you're like spending that. more time with him than anything. Yeah. yeah, so he's inspiration. Like, I wish he could be there today, but unfortunately, he's selling couches today at like this. Wow. So may, may you sell more couches. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so anyways, G Patron came along, G for Gitai, and Patron means boss. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Um, I got the name from Don Pablo Escobar. So uh, <laughs> I wanted to say so I was like, nah, nah yeah, so like, They right, used yeah. to call him Patron as like a boss, the and boss, I was like, yeah. G, G Patron. Okay, G, G boss. boss. Okay. okay. Works out. So a DJ Afro House. I'm a piano, um, Afro tech, um, and I get a bit into techno, but not too much. I'm more more focused in, in my Afro beats. Okay, that's that's me. Wow. Uh, when do you play and where do you play? So where do I play is a very tricky one because I could get called up anywhere at any time. Okay, um, I like to do more house parties, more like um, functions stuff like that yeah. instead of going to a club straight up. Do you no. understand? Yeah. Um, is that just your preference? Do you you won't take up a, a gig that wants you to go to a club, or you just don't prefer? Listen, it depends. If I've got time, I'll do it. Right, so, yeah, right, so. If I've got all the time, I would do it. Yeah. But I would prefer functions, house parties, stuff like that, because it's easier for me. Yeah. Okay. Right. I can drive with my own stuff. I don't need like or crowds or people. Nice. I don't have to go yes. in. Yeah. Yeah. Stage makeup. This this because people they do do that. They do that. Yes. Stage. Yeah. They do that. They do that. Um, yeah. And it's just easy. It's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a player that is making me messed up. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's a lot easier for me to, to do house parties and stuff like that. And also, my music is not for everyone. Do you understand? Yeah. You might love I'm a piano. She yeah. loves yeah. Uh, white girl music. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's well, everyone has yeah, their preferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if it's yeah. like a festival or something like that, like in Mahali's book. I went to a festival last year. Uh, it was called Bloom. No. So Bloom was awesome. Bloom was seriously, seriously. So nice. it was a, a whole set of different DJs. Yeah, different DJs, sets. and everyone does something else. So I do the Afro then someone else does someone this, else does this, the this, techno, yeah. someone else does, you know. So How long have you been doing this DJ thing? Uh, it's coming up to two years now. Wow. Yeah. And if years. someone with a corporate wants to uh, book you, sure. How do they get hold of you? So you can DM me. Gitai underscore Bahabi, alright, um, on Instagram. Um, if you want, I can leave my number. You can message yeah, me. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna link link down everything of a Jim Patron <laughs> right in the description down below, and definitely we would love to see people grow. So as we grow, you are growing. Just like when we say we sponsor and all we are talking about our sponsor. When we say that, that, that means you are going to get relevance in what they are doing, or you find out you know someone or someone that may find relevance in what they do. And that's how we all grow. You grow, we grow. And so as you see G Patron and you go there, follow him on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, um, I think it's now called X, X <laughs> and all the social media platforms. Because I think a lot of work is happening on social media platforms and sure. guys connecting. So you get onto the DMs. It's funny that you speak about DMs. My wife has got a new podcast and they speak about DMs. So we were on radio yesterday. The show is coming out sometime next week. And uh, she says to them, hey, ladies, you better answer those DMs because you're going to get your next lover. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome stuff. Uh, then with the furniture business, if someone wants to get hold of you to get their, their stuff or their furniture or whatever, can you talk a little bit more about that business? Um, yeah, so that's actually a family business that my dad started um, about six or seven years ago. can't remember exactly. Um, so basically, we've got our own factory. So we manufacture all our stuff. Oh, well, that's why you told me about the different colors. Yeah, so like everything is custom happen. made with us. So you can choose your own color, you can choose your own material. If you would like to extend the couch, add seats, remove seats, change day bed sides, etc. So that's what we do. So we've got our own factory. Everything is locally manufactured in South Africa. Oh. All right. 
Um, so you come into the shop, I'm sure we'll be there, Ian will be there. Yeah. So all the guys that we've been talking to will be yeah, there. We'll be there right? yeah. Even Tatenda will be there. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so everyone's going yeah. to be there. Yeah. Um, so you come, you place your order, you put a 50% deposit. Um, takes us 10 to 14 working days only. So one, two, three weeks. Yeah, it's like two that to is, three weeks. That's really fast. Two to three Amazing. weeks. We've got over 50 colors to choose from, different materials. Wow. Um, pop in. So we've got two branches at the moment. Uh, one in Northgate, where yeah, I met at Denver, well, we met, and yes. then I've got another branch in Greenstone, Greenstone Shopping Centre. Um, I'll send at Denver the link if you guys Everything. want to. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Got a website, catalog, yeah. etc. Awesome um, stuff. And yeah, just I appreciate this opportunity to attend it to you for popping in and making my day. Uh, thanks for my thank wife. To you, yes. Yeah. Thank you to thanks you. Thanks for my wife for well, listening like when I said we don't have money to go in. <laughs> but like. Babe, let's just go in and look at it. Yeah. Now, long live the friendship that comes after this. Sure, and sure. my wife, I'm going to be that great husband when I make some bit of money. Then I'll come and order a couch because we need a couch as well. You got a discount so. on me, so... Oh, yeah! <laughs> so you get your 10% off of, yeah, of February. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Um, you. What has been your overview before? I've got two questions. The first one is, what has been your overall overview of this conversation? Overall, it's it's a blessing. I can't say more than that. I appreciate every moment um, chatting to you, being here. You know, it's not something that you get an opportunity every single day. And I've been working and grinding to get to this point. All right. So always to whoever is watching here, please don't give up on your dreams. Like just carry on, move always, do what you need to do. Don't be lazy, and just be active. Like just be active. Like. The overall thing here is just appreciation, blessing, wow. and love, and peace, and wow. just that everything Amazing. as well, and that you grow and we grow. Thank you. And thank you, thank you for everything. Thank you. I, I was going to ask the same, the next question was going to be adverse to the people, but boom, you just. Yeah, right just kill it one time, kill it with one stuff, you know? Two words with one stuff. It's been amazing. Thank you so I much for taking it. I really, time. really appreciate it. I, I, lo I love this man's tattoos, right? Come on. I love that. I love that. Instead of me putting a wristband when I'm playing, what's that? Um, a sweatband. When I'm playing, okay, you can just come in and look cool. Yeah. Anyway, if you're still here, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. To the people that are watching for the first time, we are about mental health and making sure that someone else's story is going to inspire you or inspire the next person into making sure that they are a better version of themselves or their families or societies. Because we believe that if an individual is strong, they're going to be part of a stronger society. So every strong individual makes a stronger, bigger picture. And that's what we're trying to get at. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time to listen to this and finding inspiration through guitar. And the people that came with guitar, you came with the whole interest. So there's so many people behind you. <laughs> they just with big guns. And I'm, I'm being scared. Yeah, I'm just worried. That's okay. Yeah. okay. I'm trying. Anyway, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, thank you, and thank you.